Hello folks, it's really good to speak to you. I hope you had a lovely week. It's our last lesson today, looking at Sikhism in RE. I'm quite sad about that. I find Sikhism really interesting, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the last six weeks, and the six weeks at the beginning of September, looking at Sikh beliefs as well. And now you've got a really solid grasp of a religion that might be quite different from your own faith, or if you come from a background of no faith, or it might be your own faith, the faith of your family. So, interesting either way. Today we are going to do um, a writing lesson, and you did so well at doing this two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, that uh, I'm going to help you to write another paragraph, another very short essay, as we might call them, uh, but this time all about Sikh practices, all about Sikh weddings, um, and uh, looking at Vaisakhi, the festival of Vaisakhi that we just looked at. Before we do that, have a go at these three uh, questions on the quiz for me, pause the video and come back. Okay, welcome back. So the first one, which word means the food that Sikh gives Sikh people give out at Gurdwaras? The answer to that, of course, is Langer. Granthi is the person who reads the Guru Granth Sahib, and Seva is this idea of selflessness, of giving the self to others. When does Vaisakhi take place? Oh, Mr. Smith, you should know this. Let's double check. If you know, you're doing better than I do. I think it's in April. Yes, it is. Okay, so he's celebrated by Sikh people around the world in April. Well remembered, if you remember that. Uh, where in the world do most British Sikhs have their roots? Is it Kenya, Japan or India? The answer is Japan. Uh, Sikhism as a religion originates in India and it's still very popular in India. Today then, what we're going to do is, just like last time, we're going to write a short paragraph. Well, maybe not that short, but we're going to write a paragraph looking at the things that we've learned over the last two lessons. So let's read our topic sentence. And the topic sentence tells us what our paragraph is going to be about overall. So it says Sikh weddings and the festival of Vaisakhi are incredibly important ways for the Sikh community to come together and show their Sikh values. And when we're talking about how people show their values, whether that's through festivals, whether it's through the design of a temple, whether it's through um, the clothes that they wear or the items that they have on them, remember the 5Ks from last half term, that is called symbolism. So when a Christian wears a cross on a chain, when a Sikh person carries a dagger with them, when a Hindu person has a, a bindi, which is a spot on their forehead, that is symbolism. It's something that represents something else. The cross in Christianity represents Jesus and sacrifice. The uh, symbol of Sikhism, which looks like this, it's called the Kanda, okay? This represents... Um, Sikh people protecting each other and the Khalsa, that's why the swords are there. That's called symbolism and festivals are no different. So can you think of some of the, the symbols that we saw, for example, in the wedding festival? Well, the bride and groom are treated like uh, king and queen for a day. That's symbolic of how important they are. They walk around the Guru Granth Sahib during the festival, again, to show how important that text is to them uh, as part of the wedding ceremony. Uh, during the ceremony itself, they sit in front of the Guru Granth Sahib and the Granthi reads the teachings on marriage. It's difficult to overstate how important this book is to the Sikh religion. The fact they treat it like a teacher, the fact that it goes and stays in its own room at night. Um, and then they have, the, for example, the colours here. You'll notice that the bride always wears red during the wedding festival. There's a lot of red. It's a colour of celebration within Sikhism. Um, the turban, we know that that is a symbol within Sikhism of devotion. Uh, it shows that the man is a Sikh. It's a visible symbol of it. Symbolism again. Um, so, and in Vaisakhi as well. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go back to writing our paragraph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you uh, plan this and then you're going to write it in and hopefully send it through to me because you're such amazing writers or send it through to your year group because I would love to read these. So what happens at a Sikh wedding? that makes it special. Why does the Guru, Guru Granth Sahib take such a big role? So what we're going to do is we're going to make some short notes in the planning section so you can then turn those into full sentences. So in the Sikh wedding, what kind of symbolism is there that we can talk about? Well, we just said that they are treated like a king and a queen. The Guru Granth Sahib is red. Ooh, I'll use capital letters for that. Guru Granth Sahib is, it's red, uh, it takes centre stage, or it's at the centre of proceedings, 
and obviously they do everything to show their respect for it. Remember, they're waving over the top of it to remove dust from it. Okay, so those are some of the symbolism. Now you've got better notes than I do. I've just got my PowerPoint. You've got all your notes in your booklet, so there are definitely things that you can add there in terms of the symbolism of a wedding. Okay, what does what do these things represent? Point two talks about Vaisakhi. Okay, so what makes Vaisakhi special and why does it bring the Sikh community together? What were the main parts of Vaisakhi? Do you remember? There was the parade, there were the Khalsa, the Khalsa Knights. Actually, I'm pretty sure that should be a capital K as well. Uh, there were the Khalsa Knights, the parade. Uh, it was a celebration of, of, of harvest, remember? Uh, and we watched a video about it, didn't we? And we looked at the photos as well of the, the Sikh community in Southall in West London. So again, I want you to look back through your notes from last lesson. You might even want to re-watch last lesson if that's what you feel like doing, to think about the um, symbolism that was there. And we can say it brings the whole community together. It's a time to celebrate and to share joy and to hope for a good harvest and it's really important i think if you imagine that you are um, a sikh person living in a community in the very far north of canada there might only be 500 people living in your town and there might only be 10 sikh people well, if you were celebrating Vaisakhi, if you were having a parade through that town, you would feel like you were coming together as that community and showing off your identity to others and welcoming them in to learn more about it as well. So Vaisakhi is obviously a huge celebration in India, but it's also a celebration wherever there are Sikh people living together, whether that's in the UK, in Canada, in Buenos Aires, they have a Vaisakhi celebration. And then finally, um, who were the Khalsa? And why do the Sikhs celebrate with them at uh, Vaisakhi? So if you remember, the Khalsa are um, Sikh people who promise to protect the Sikh faith and community. And they go back hundreds of years so that's part of why they're celebrated at Vaisakhi and you can talk about how important that community of men is within the wider community so if this is all the whole of the Sikh community within that community is the Khalsa okay it's a smaller part of the wider Sikh community but they are the ones who are charged with protecting so when we looked at the the video if you remember um, they are the people, I mean, this is sort of the junior Khalsa, but they are the people wearing those orange robes. They are the people, oh, here they are actually, they're in this picture, holding the swords. They are the sort of the protectors and the leaders of the community, okay? So that's the Khalsa. Now what you can do is you can take all of those and you can begin to write your paragraph. So you could start by saying something like, a Sikh wedding is full of symbolism such as and then I want you to continue and I want you to use linking words like because as a result of and even however if you're linking together two sections that um, disagree with each other okay uh, and the first thing you need to do is put in your topic sentence. You can copy it or you can change it from the previous sheet. Then you're going to make your point one, point two, point three, full sentences, which you're more than capable of. You're all excellent writers. And uh, that's it. That's That will be your essay done. And I'm sure they're absolutely excellent. Really enjoyed teaching you this half term. Um, next half term, we are going to look at something completely different, which is churches. We're going to find out all about the visual language of churches. So you, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to say draw a church and you're going to draw the first church that comes to mind and then we're going to spend the first lesson saying it's not what all churches look like. Churches are so varied and different and we're going to learn about what happens inside a church, what the different parts are and you're going to have a chance to design your own church. So it should be really interesting. And I'll see you after half term. I hope you have a really good, really relaxing break. Take a break from screens and I'll um, see you in a week or so. See you later.